If there is one thing Coloradans can agree on, it's that XL energy bills are out of control. Double, triple what people saw this time last year. We went line by line through all of the obscure add-on charges, and you can find that story on 9news.com. Our Marshall Zellinger returns tonight with a look at why some of those charges exist. The biggest charges on your Excel bill are the cost of generating and using electricity and natural gas. Here is the short answer as to why you're paying so much for natural gas. The left side shows the cost Excel paid last year. The right side shows the recent prices paid by Excel that are then passed down dollar for dollar to us. So I asked Excel Regional Vice President Jack Eiley why Excel does not bear any risk for not planning better, like buying and storing gas when it was less expensive. Isn't that the risk of stockholders? Like, oops, it was really cold in December. Our customers used a lot of energy to heat their homes, we're going to miss out on some money that we thought we were going to have. On these fuel cost pass-throughs, and that's what we call them because we earn zero profit. We make zero margin on those. We don't make money on those, so we pass those through to customers. So it's, it's essential for the financial health of the company to not bear a liability for something that it earns no profit on. There are other line items on our bills that add up over time, like the first line on both gas and electric. On the first charge service and facility, like at some point, haven't I paid off the equipment that's on my home? Or like I heard I'm paying for the customer service. Well, that's an, isn't that an expensive Excel? Like why am I paying for Excel to employ customer service through this service and facility charge? It's partially capital, capital, meaning the cost of the meters. Those depreciate over time. They need to be replaced. It's average across all the customers. So every year we're going to replace new meters. The cost to maintain uh, the support systems like customer care accounts, that, that's ongoing as well. That doesn't come for free to us, and so we do seek to recover those costs from customers. He also pointed out the smaller items on the bill. Charges we pay so Excel can provide renewable energy programs, or rebates for electric vehicle charging stations at our home, or the charge to pay Excel sell back for retiring coal plants early. Why does the customer have to pay for that? Viewers are asking, like, what's Excel's risk? Doesn't Excel spend money? We heard a lot about, well, Excel spent this and customers pay it back. Yeah. Why am I paying? Excel has, has been driven, you know, by a lot of um, directives from the Colorado legislature, for instance, to do things like promote electric vehicle adoption and promote distributed renewable energy adoption and promote energy efficiency. So often that is directed by the Colorado legislature. Okay, so is it the state legislature's fault that we are nickel and dime so Excel can offer rebates, programs, and shut down plants earlier than anticipated? I asked Democratic Senate President Steve Fenberg, who focuses on energy policy. When a company like Excel says, wow, our, our utility rates are going up because the legislature made us do all these renewable things, I think that's baloney because transitioning to renewables should be actually a cost-saving measure um, but of course, a, a for-profit, um, publicly traded, huge company is always going to find ways to make money off of every investment they make. That is their job. Um, but we have to do a better job as a legislature to, to hold their feet to the fire and make sure that ratepayers are being looked out for. I should point out again that there is a Public Utilities Commission, three commissioners that hear requests from Excel to put things on our bills that get approved. We got a lot of viewer feedback from our story explaining what's on your Excel bill. One viewer was frustrated that customer service couldn't tell them if they were better off with the time of use rates or if they opted out and just paid a flat rate. In the last hour, Kyle, I got a response back from Excel on how we can try to calculate which one is best. So I know I'm teasing ahead to another story in the future, but this one will be helpful to do some math to figure out which one will save you the most money. I, th I think, Marshall, I think everybody gets the idea that companies are going to pass along costs to customers. And I think everybody gets that government mandates can increase a company's costs, and that can get passed on to customers. But if this was a sandwich shop that had more expensive salami, and they decided not to trim their profits, but instead just raise the price of their sandwiches, eventually another sandwich company would open up across the street and sell a cheaper sandwich. True. Yeah, you need the competition. And Senator Fenberg and I talked about that, that there is, like, you need, if you're Chipotle, he used that example, you've got Qdoba, or you've got the burger place that are they're making decisions that impact your decision. But if you're the only player in town, and currently I believe it would be illegal for any other player unless there is a state law change, Excel is the one that can do what it wants with the approval of those three public utility commissioners. They are the game right now. Marshall, thank you.